You're listening to the Fierce Fatty Podcast, episode 41. I am your host, Victoria Wellsby, and in this episode we're talking about, is diet culture a cult? Let's do it! Perfect! I'm Victoria Wellsby, TEDx speaker, best-selling author and fat activist. I have transformed my life from hating my body with desperately low self-esteem to being a courageous and confident, fierce fatty who loves every inch of this jelly. Society teaches us living in a fat body is bad, but what if we spent less time, money and energy on the pursuit of thinness and instead focused on the things that actually matter, like if pineapple on pizza should be outlawed, or if the mullet was the greatest haircut of the 20th century. So, how do you stop negative beliefs about your fat body controlling your life? It's the Fierce Fatty Podcast. Let's begin. Hello, welcome to this episode, Fatty. So pleased to have you here. How you doing? How's life? I'm uh, feeling pretty obsessed at the moment because um, I've watched Hamilton. Now, I'm not necessarily a big musical theatre fan, although mm, I just, I, mm, that's not really true, I am. <laughs> Why am I trying to lie to you? I am. Um, And anyway, so it's out on Disney Plus now. And why? Why does it get stuck in your head? Like, what the heck? These songs, they're so good. (laughs) So if you haven't seen it and you're vaguely into musicals or whatever, then uh, go and watch it or listen to the soundtrack because it's really good. I'm really obsessed with You'll Be Back. You'll be back once again. That's not the words, but well, that's a little bit of the words. And uh, satisfied. So good. Oh my gosh. But um, yeah, go check it out. But today I'm feeling like, um, oh, I've had this new experience. Oh my gosh. So um, so I'm asthmatic. And for the last uh, year, my asthma's been really bad. And um, I've been like struggling to breathe. And I've been like putting it off, you know, just taking more inhalers. And then in the last couple of weeks, it's just, you know, got really bad. And... Um, so then last week, a, a few days ago, I called my doctor and I was like, oh, I'm having struggle, troubling breathing. It's just my asthma. And she's like, oh, my God. We shouldn't say, oh, my God. <laughs> but she was like, OK, you need to go and get tested for coronavirus, um, you know, just to rule it out and go and see the doctors and in not the hospital and stuff. And so they were like, you have to go today. And so I went and I went to this this place where they screen people for coronavirus. You, you don't have to go in until they like they come to your car and then you go in and then everyone's wearing like masks and the, um, the f- face screens and, you know, loads of protective gear. And I was like, oh, my God, what's going on? And um, yeah, they listen to my chest and all that type of stuff. And all my symptoms, which were just that I couldn't breathe. And they were like, oh, well, we think this is not your asthma. This is anxiety. And I was like, interesting. Because I've never um, been diagnosed with anxiety. Like I have depression and it's pretty manageable for the most part. Um, but I'm not necessarily an anxious person. And so when they said it's anxiety, I was like, oh, wow, I never knew that anxiety could be manifested in not being able to breathe properly. Because I was like, yeah, I've been taking like 20 puffs of my inhaler a day and it's not really working. And they're like, "Mm -hmm, okay, well, (laughs) it's not your asthma then. Like, it makes sense because um, I have had probably one of the most... Uh, challenging years of my life this year one of the most challenging obviously not as challenging as being homeless and abused but um, it's kind of getting up there Uh, I've had a lot of things just it's just been a really unlucky year and almost every single part of my life something unlucky or unfortunate has happened and yeah it's obviously manifested 
in not being able to breathe properly. So if you hear me being like, <laughs> then you know what it is. Anyway, and then so I also went to get the corona test and I'm in Ireland, right? And this stuff, this is all free. It's all done so quickly. And so then I drove drove to another location where, you know, you stay in your car and then they come and immediately I got through because there's no one else there. Um, in Ireland, we don't have many cases at all and the government is not like fucking Trump oh feel sorry for any of you americans anyway and then i got the um if you're curious what the test is they put like a little swab at the back of your throat takes a couple of seconds and then they put this that this i didn't i didn't see it because like my head was back but it must have been about 17 meters long <laughs> this swab <laughs> to get it into the back of like your your nasal cavity and um they put it in and and it's it, it's it's a weird sensation i'm not i'm not gonna lie it's a weird sensation and then they just do a little ding -ding -ding, and then it's done and then that's it you're like your eyes your, my eyes were watering and then i was like oh okay, bye thanks and uh <laughs> and that's it anyway so um yeah anxiety different a different a new new experience for me and really i think it's you know my lack of education about what anxiety could be like that i had never i was like what it makes you not be able to breathe this is strange to be on the safe side they're 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 treating me for um an asthma flare-up so they're giving me antibiotics and steroids just in case that is what it is but it, this doesn't sound like it because my chest sounds good but um yeah so just be on the lookout if if you're feeling stressed about how what your body could be doing to try and help you and the reason with what i've discovered with anxiety is your body is in fight or flight right and so my body is 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 making it so that um you know it, it's saying we're at risk we're 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 in danger at the moment even though like on a day-to-day, -day, you know, I don't feel in danger, but obviously something in my mind is telling me. And, you know, looking at my, all the different situations I'm currently experiencing, I'm like, well, shit, that makes sense. So, um, yeah, fingers crossed, life gets a little bit better and I've been um, meditating and sniffing some scented candles and all that sort of jazz. So if you've got any uh, tips or tricks on how to, to make your breathing, better and any I don't know maybe when I get back to Canada I'll, I'll get some uh, nice medical marijuana and um, try that and I guess I give my dog CBD oil because he's got anxiety <laughs> he's got anxiety maybe yeah now we're doing you know you get owners and dogs at the same he has anxiety now I do so there we go before we get into it, just a quick reminder that um, I have a Facebook group called Fierce Fatty Friends. And hey, listen up here. Now, there's three questions you have to answer to get into my Facebook group. And I'd say 25% of people don't answer the questions. And what happens is your request just gets deleted because I want to make sure that real people are um, joining the group and not like trolls or whatever. And so you have to answer the questions. Now, if you've requested and um, you've not been let in, you can actually go back to the, press the button to go back to join the group and you'll be, you'll still be able to answer the questions. And so if you ask, cause sometimes what you do is you can accidentally just press join group without seeing the questions so that you see them, but you have to skip over them anyway, but you can go back and then answer them after you've already requested. So if you've done that, then do that. Um, but yeah, you have to answer the questions. So go to the link in the thingamajig below and um, there'll be a link there to join. But if you're just on Facebook, you can just search Fierce Fatty Friends and then you can come and join the group. All right, so let's talk about what we are talking about today, which is diet cultures, diet culture and cults. Now, the reason why I got onto this topic and it's just been in my brain and I'm like, I need to talk to you about it um, is because I have a business, obviously. <laughs> That's why you're listening to me. I have a business and I'm in the online business world. And obviously I follow a lot of online business people. I have a lot of coaches and people that I pay money to, um, to teach me how to be a business person. And um, at the moment, coronavirus is obviously still ongoing. And in the States, it's the epicenter of it. And it's just absolutely going 
you know raging over there the rest of the world is looking at the states like get your shit together holy god oh my god i can't believe you have to deal with um donald trump Ugh, it's just awful anyway and so a lot of the business people that i follow actually like 99 percent of them they all happen to be in the states and just last week or the week before the main business person that i follow he held an in-person event this mastermind retreat thing and now some people joined virtually but there were a number of people who were there who had gathered and they were not social distancing they weren't wearing masks and they were just you know they traveled from different states and they were in arizona which is i think um it's been reported like the one of the worst places at the moment for new outbreaks so a lot of me and other business people have been calling this out and saying hey it's irresponsible like if you're a leader um it, it in any way people look to you for um what you should and shouldn't be doing and so them doing this holding an event it was a number of business leaders that held an event um it's you know some followers are going to be like oh well it's okay for me if i'm in the us to hold events and put people's lives at risk in the name of profit <laughs> and uh, mm -mm, that's not cool you know and then some people are gonna be like oh that's not cool and so anyway me and a number of other business people um have called it out and said this is not cool anyway and so um i then went into thinking about you know unethical business practices and I, for, for a couple of years now, I've been really interested in um, multi-level marketing, MLMs. Not interested as in I wanna do it, interested as in it's um, highly unethical, predatory. The stats show that 99.6% of people who join a multi-level marketing company lose money so you would be better to take your money and go to um a casino and put it all on black or red because i think you have a 10 percent chance of winning from the top of my head from what i remember in, in my research a 10 percent chance of winning so you're like you're more likely to win money just by going to you know to make more money by a long shot just by going and gambling it away Anyway, so multi-level marketing is um, just a side note in case you don't know what it is. There's so many companies that are multi-level marketing like uh, Mary Kay, Amway, The Body Shop, which is strange. Um, not in all countries, but doTERRA, uh, Beachbody, which is just, you know, dieting bullshit. Anyway, and so the idea is that um, they sell products, but really, you know, they, that's like a... They sell products just so that they're not shut down for being illegal. What it is, is you're recruiting people under you for them to sell products. And then you're getting a bit of their money and the money that they pay to join and all that type of stuff. And it's like, it's like a it's pyramid scheme, right? Um, but quote unquote legal. Anyway, you search in, uh, there's so many good documentaries and shit about this and so many good podcasts and whatnot. Like for ages, I've just been, Oh, I've watched so many hundreds of hours and listened to so many uh, podcasts about it anyway. And so then I started listening to this podcast called Toxic Positivity, which um, Toxic Positivity is the idea that you should um, not, not be expressing any negative emotions. You should just be, always be happy and bright. And a lot of people in the MLM world subscribe to this this thought process of toxic positivity. So this this uh, this one podcast called Toxic P Positivity um, by Lillian Lalo was really good. And I just started listening to it and I was super excited and surprised when I heard on one episode the link between diets um, diet culture and cults and MLMs and I was like oh my god like um talking about how diet culture is wrong is now becoming way more mainstream and that connection between cults it was a short episode like 15 minutes I'll link to it in the show notes um it's it's being explored more and more and they had um molly Barr from molly b consulting who is who's great on instagram go follow molly and talking about that um so i was just like oh my god like why have i not made an episode about this before 
anyway, so that's my long kind of ramble into why um, this episode is important and why I wanted to talk about it. And what I spend my life doing, which is watching, um, listening to, <laughs> listening and watching uh, uh, videos and podcasts about uh, true crime, about multi-level marketing and about pimple popping. I know I'm horrible. I'm a horrible person. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but this is my life. This is what I do. Okay, so just in case you don't know what diet culture is, I'm here talking about it and you might not even be familiar with this term, but um, from ED, edrdpro.com, this is how they uh, define diet culture. Diet culture is a belief system that focuses on and values weight, shape and size over well-being. Variations of diet culture also include rigid eating patterns that on the surface are in the name of health, but in reality are about weight, shape or size. So let me repeat that. Diet culture is a belief system that focuses, and focuses on and values weight, shape and size over well-being. So we live in a diet culture, like, mo you know, most cultures and countries in the world is focused on your size and they disguise it as um oh but it's about your health it's about your health it's not about your size but also if you lose weight then that's great you know uh so what is a cult you probably know this already but just in case so wikipedia defines a cult as in modern english a cult is a social group that is defined by its unusual religious, spiritual or f philosophical beliefs or by its common interest in a particular personality, object or goal. Okay, so there is this uh, cult e expert called Stephen Hassan and he has developed um, something called the bite model freedomofmind.com forward slash bite model again i'll link it in the show notes and it says um stephen hassan developed the bite model to describe the specific methods that cults use to recruit and maintain control over people bite stands for behavior information thought and emotional control Destructive mind control can be determined when the overall effect of these four components promotes dependency and obedience to some leader or cause. It is not necessarily for every single item on the list to be, to be present. And so um, he goes into the four different things and it lists out all the possible different ways that you could be being controlled or influenced by cults. Um, continuing. Like many techniques, it is not inherently good or evil. If mind control techniques are used to empower an individual to have more choice and authority for their life uh, remains within an authority for their life remains within themselves, the effect can be beneficial. For example, benevolent mind control can be used to help people quit smoking without affecting any other behavior. Mind control becomes destructive when it undermines a person's ability to think and act independently okay so I'm gonna go into the four different um, parts of this bite model and show you how it is connected to diet culture and diets um, so yeah okay so the first one is B behavior control so I'm not gonna list out all of the different things in here um, because there's there's a lot <laughs> here is some things um summarized okay so behavior control these are things that cults do regulate individuals physical reality dictate where how and with whom the member lives and associates control types of clothing and hairstyles regulate diet food and drink hunger and or fasting Mm. Oh, well, 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 well. Interesting. Okay. Just in those first four things, controlling what you, um, what you wear, how you eat, um, 
when and like your physical reality like what you do with your life how you and so this could be how you exercise what foods you eat whether you're spending time with certain people who are not dieting because you don't want them to influence you in negative ways and so your physical reality so re number that's number one regulate an individual's physical reality when you're on a diet your physical reality is 100% regulated. From the moment I would wake up, the first thing that I would be thinking about is my diet, is food, when I'm allowed to eat, what I'm allowed to eat, um, when I should be exercising, how much I should be exercising, um, what clothes that I should be wearing to hide my body, uh, what clothes I should be wearing to indicate that I'm a good fatty, um, everything morning to night was affected when when i was dieting right because you're obsessed with it um and you were looking to the diet to tell you and diet culture to tell you what you should be doing and shouldn't be doing okay continuing manipulation and deprivation of sleep how many times would you have woken up early in the morning to go to the gym or uh, after work, when you're exhausted, force yourself to work out or um, be up late or early in the morning, um, planning meals or, you know, cooking things for yourself, which are on the plan. And also, by the way, um, sleep deprivation is a torture device, torture technique. It is re it really wears you down. OK, continuing. Restrict leisure, entertainment and vacation time hmm how many times have i in my life not done something because i knew that it would um, make me fall off the plan so say if my friends were like we're going on a night out and i'd be like mm, no uh, I can't because I knew that if I if I drank some alcohol, then I'd be like, fuck it. And then I'd be like, I want a kebab and I want some chips. And I just, you know, and then I'd, I would have broken my, my diet. And even just drinking alcohol, that would be broken the diet anyway. And uh, restricting like leisure and entertainment time, you know, vacation time. Um, constantly thinking like if I did go on, on holiday or on vacation, um, what I could be eating, how much of the p diet I could be, um, you know, breaking and uh, how does my body look if I'm at the beach and if I'm at the cinema for entertainment time, can I have popcorn and, and should I have an ice junkie or should I not and blah, 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 blah. Um, just constantly. Ugh. Anyway, okay, continue. Major time spent with group indoctrination and rituals and or self-indoctrinationing, including the internet. Hmm. Are you spending a uh, major time when you're on a diet? Looking at food recipes, following accounts that says, oh, here's my goal body. Um, uh, learning about your diet. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Next, rewards and punishments used to modify behaviours, both po both positive and negative. Hmm. Now, um, have you ever rewarded yourself when you were dieting? Ever, you know, any self-flagellation if you didn't lose weight? Positive and negative rewards and punishments. Lots of that in dieting, right? Next, under behavior control, impose rigid rules and reg regulations. Well, that's just like the DNA of a diet is rigid rules and regulations. Finally, under this B, behavior control is instill dependency and obedience. Now this is a massive one. So uh, something that diets do is they infantilize you. They, they treat you like you have no idea how to feed yourself, how to look after your body, and that you need to follow these rules and this diet because this diet is the best diet. And if you don't, then well, you you can't be expected to be to be left on your own own devices because if you do well look what's happened to you you're just so fat and greedy you need to um do what i tell you to say with this diet you you must eat six peas only 
one kernel of corn only because you don't know how to feed yourself. Have you ever felt that, that you don't know how to eat? And if it's left up to you, then you'll just eat everything. That's instilling dependency on the diet. Like, because you can then never, you can never just go off and feed yourself on your own because, and listen to your body because you'll be out of control, right? All right, okay. So that is the behavior control. Next is information control. So, the first part of this is deception. So deliver, deliberately withhold information, distort information to make it more acceptable and systematically lie to the cult member. Now, the backbone of diets is deception because there has never once in the history of the world been a study to show that a diet Success, successfully reduces your body weight long term okay and so just the idea of dieting is based in deception withholding information and distorting information because you know you see these adverts and they're like oh look at these people so happy because they're so thin and ah oh, you know do our diet you're gonna be amazing and even at the bottom, if they have like an asterisk saying, you know, results not typical or or um, sometimes I'll see some sort of stat that says like, oh, 10 percent of members are able to lose weight. And I'm like, that's not true. 10 percent of members are not able to lose weight. And even you're not looking at that asterisk of 10 percent. And even if you are, you're like, I'm the 10 percent it's going to work for right they it's just they have got no scientific proof to show that their diet works and it's just and if you were to ever question it and say well can you give me some evidence they anything that they produce it would be not based in science right okay so the next one in this in the um, information control is minimize or discourage access to non-cult sources of information including internet tv books blah 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 uh critical information uh former members and keep members busy so they don't have time to think and investigate so um have you been told in your diet if you should be uh consuming certain types of information to make sure that you stick to the plan are you uh reading a lot of like diet magazines and uh watching hours of the biggest loser i would do i would binge watch the biggest loser hours on end and i'd always be like look at these disgusting fatties and the ones that wouldn't lose like you know because they they'd be losing like a thousand pounds every week and the ones who didn't lose a thousand pounds and they only lost like 999 pounds in a week i you know i'd be like oh well, they clearly didn't try. Just deepening my fat phobia and solidifying that diets were good. So next, compartmentalize information into outsider versus insider doctrines. So ensure that information is not freely accessible and control information at different levels and missions within the group. Next, encourage spying on other members impose a buddy system to monitor and control member uh, report deviant thoughts feelings and actions to leadership and ensure that individual behavior is monitored by group now what a way to monitor your behavior by the group by having a weekly weigh-in and now that is going to tell if you have been good or bad, if you are lying or if you are telling the truth when you say that you're on the plan. And a lot of diets will say that you need to have a buddy, a dieting, uh, someone who's going to help you and keep you on track. And sometimes i've seen in 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 diet meetings you know one person being like oh well, i haven't eaten anything and someone will be like well you ate a pea the other day so mm, that's not actually true is it now samantha you had a pea so be honest with the group um 
And as well, if you're having these deviant thoughts, feelings and actions, like you're having to confess to the group. Well, I did, yeah. I had some dust on, on Wednesday. That's probably why I only lost £17,000 this week and not £100,000, you know. Okay, so final in this one is extensive use of cult-generated information and propaganda, including newsletters, magazines, journals, tapes, videos, YouTube, movies, and misquoting statements or using them out of context from non-cult sources. Holy shit. I would devour all dieting magazines. I would just be so, uh, oh, that would just be my Bible. Anything that I could get from, I used to be, um, uh, do Weight Watchers. Um, not obviously promoting Weight Watchers because it's obviously a big bag of shit, but anything Weight Watchers that I could get my hands on, um, any, you know, information and, and stuff that they had produced, I'd be like, well, this is the Bible. Um, yeah, so that is information control. Next is, this is the bite model and we're on to T, thought control. First bit here, require members to internalize the group's doctrine as truth. Hmm, adopting the group's map of reality as reality, instill black and white thinking. Decide between good versus evil and organize people into us versus them, insiders versus outsiders. Oh my God, right? So require members to internalize the group's doctrine as truth. Now, have you ever come across someone who's like, oh my God, well, I've read this book about this new diet and turns out that if you only put cucumbers up your bum for a month, like that's how we used to consume um, calories when we were aliens and this is the new diet and this is the way that we, um, we need to eat. And I know that that's true because I read it in this book that this person read. Um, and so if you're in a diet, you're like, no, this is, this is true. This is true. This works. I know this works. It's working for me. Um, and it's very black and white thinking, right? Um, black and white thinking. That is what diets do is black and white thinking. This, this body is good. This body is bad. This body is healthy. This body is unhealthy. This food is good. This food is bad. And there's a lot of, uh, moralizing of food. So good versus evil, evil, you know, that, um, kind of like religious, uh, uh undertones or overtones of, uh, you know, this food, which is quote unquote junk food is like even that word junk garbage there is no so there's no food that is junk or garbage unless you're eating i don't know dog shit or something then i would say that probably is garbage um but there is no foods that are, are morally superior or inferior right but that is not what diets and diet culture tells us not at all not at all <laughs> Um, and then organize people into us versus them. Okay, so um, have you felt when you're on a diet, I know I have, mor morally superior to the, all the fatties who are not dieting? Like, oh, they're so, they're so ignorant. They don't know that they could be like me and on my journey to health if they only, if they had some willpower and they weren't so gluttonous, not like me and the rest of the people in this uh, weight reducing temporary group. I felt so like I had the answer and they didn't. People who weren't dieting, people who were fat and happy, they didn't know any better. Not like me. And oh my God, when then, then when the diet fails and you're like, oh God, I am just like all of those people that I was denigrating 10 months ago. Ugh. Okay. Next, change person's name and identity. So now this, I've seen this a lot. Now you might be thinking, what? Well, I, don't, I didn't change my name and identity when I was on a diet, but hey, I see so often, I don't know this if this is a new tactic that um, diet companies are taking, but people on Instagram and other social media, not on Facebook as much, but Instagram, they change their name 
to their name and then Slimming World or um, an abbreviation of Slimming World. So Slimming World is a British diet company. Have you noticed this? So they're making their change their name. I think it's a way so that all the other Slimming World people can find each other. But I don't know. That's fucked up. Anyway, so change a person's name and identity. Identity, your your identity is definitely changed. Like you were a dieter. You were a good person, right? You were not one of those greedy fatties anymore. You are on your way to salvation. Okay, next. Use of loaded language and cliches which constrict knowledge, stop critical thoughts and reduce complexities into platitudinous buzzwords, right? So there's loads of this in, in, uh, in diet culture. Uh, no pain, no gain, that type of thing. You know, very, uh, yeah, platitudinous <laughs> buzzwords. Um, you know, calories in, calories out, you know? And it makes these really complex things into a buzzword. Okay encourage only good and proper thoughts teaching thought stopping techniques which shut down reality testing by stopping negative thoughts and allowing only positive thoughts including uh, denial rationalization justification wishful thinking wishful thinking chanting meditating praying and singing or humming now this is a lot of denying reality of hunger, denying the reality of being on a diet, um, just not listening to what is going on with your life and your body. Next, rejection of rational analysis, critical thinking or constructive criticism. Forbid critical questions about the leader, doctrine or policy allowed. Now, a lot of this is just follow the program. Don't ask questions about it, it works. If you just do this, it's gonna work. Look at Sally over there, she lost loads of weight and she just followed the program. She didn't ask questions at every step, she just did it. Hmm. Next, labeling alternative belief systems as illegitimate, evil or not useful. Instill new map of reality. So the new map of reality is that if you become thin, then all of these magical things are gonna happen. Like I mentioned in my uh, last episode, oh, not last episode, maybe a couple of episodes ago, um, you know, if you become thin, then you're gonna be healthy, then you're gonna be happier, then your partner's gonna love you, then blah, 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 blah. Hmm? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, final one in the bite model. E is emotional control okay so emotional control manipulate and narrow the range of feelings some emotions and or needs are deemed as evil wrong or selfish okay so feeling hungry is wrong uh why would you feel hungry when you just ate some dust i mean come on what's wrong with you Fear that the diet won't work, that is another one. So you'll be like, oh, I'm scared that the diet's not gonna work. Uh, what am I gonna do? Like once, when, when I lose the weight, can I start eating normally again? When I uh, finally got out of me doing my big diet and I left the cult, <laughs> my leader was like, I'm really worried and scared for you about what is gonna happen to you, right? So she was like, basically you were wrong you are wrong and because i was an i was an almost leader so i was like weighing people and i was selling the the garbage that they you know the magazines and the chocolate bars or whatever um and she was like people need you as a um, they need you as a leader they need you as an inspiration and you're just gonna you know she didn't say oh you're just gonna get fat but she was like i'm just really worried for you um okay teach emotion stopping techniques to block feelings of homesickness anger or doubt so like i said before you know, anger, like, what, well, I'm gonna have to fucking eat nothing for the rest of my life to stay small. Uh, <laughs> make the person feel that problems are always their own fault. Never the leader's or the group's fault. Sound familiar? It's not that the diet failed, it's that you failed doing the diet, right? The diet companies never say, you know what, actually, you know, our product is really faulty. Actually, 
95 to 100 percent of people um it doesn't work for them and you know actually we should give you your money back imagine 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 if you got a product any product you bought anything a tv for example and 95 to 100 percent of the time that tv didn't work and then you called up the tv company you're like hey listen up here now you called up best buy best buy um 100 days in a row i've tried to turn on that tv and it's only turned on three times and best buy were like well it's because, you know, you're not in a good mind space here. I'm not sure if you're really trying to turn the TV on. Are you following the plan? Are you really hitting the on button in the right way? And then you say, oh, maybe, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'll just keep trying again for another hundred days and see if it's, if it's, if it works or not. No, you'd be like, I fucking press the button. It's not turning on. It only turns on like once every hundred times, the TV is broken. Give me my fucking money back. But with diets and with cults, they say it's your fault, not their fault, not the group's fault, not the plan's fault, not the product's fault. It is you. Okay, so promote feelings of guilt or unworthiness, such as you're not living up to your potential. Your family is deficient. So with your family um, is deficient, did your family, are they the ones that made you fat? Your past is suspect. So they'll say, well, you made yourself like this. You can only blame yourself because you look like this. Your affiliations are unwise. So this is continuing. Your affiliations are unwise. Your thoughts, feelings, actions are irrelevant or selfish. And they promote social guilt. I mean, like diets and guilt, they are literally like they're married, right? You know, it's just guilt, guilt, guilt that you, it's your fault that you, it's your fault that your body is like that, that you feel like that, that you behave like that, whatever it is, it's your fault. And you need to be feeling really fucking guilty for the state of who you are, the way that you behave. Okay, next. So instill fear, such as fear of thinking independently the outside world so i knew that the outside world wasn't safe so um because of all of the different variety of food all of the different situations that i could be putting myself in so um like say if i had to go to a restaurant and i didn't know how many calories were in a certain thing and weight watchers where they'd give you this book this big giant book that you didn't give you you had to buy it obviously where it, it lists out all of the um foods in the different main restaurant chains and how many points that they were and so i'd be like oh well i can only go to this one restaurant chain because i know that 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 starter i can have that one thing because it only has you know the least calories or whatever um, and if i ever had to go to somewhere where they didn't have you know i didn't have the calorie information then i then it would be unsafe for me it was dangerous because what are the consequences if i ate something that was outside the plan next losing one's salvation oh this is a big one so the hope that you will be good if you are thin that salvation of not being a fat person and and what that means if you are a fat person what it means if you were a thin person and leaving the diet means that you are losing your salvation you are losing that hope for life that is what they tell you that's not the reality the uh, instilling fear so a fear of of uh, leaving or being shunned by the group and others disapproval mm-hmm mm-hmm yep <laughs> so extremes of emotional highs and, and low so love bombing and praise one moment and then declaring you're a horrible sinner the next so if you lose weight then oh my god you are celebrated in the diet culture cult right you are so celebrated and then if you don't then you are shamed you might not be overtly shamed but you know that people are thinking like oh well what's she been doing what have they been doing this week they clearly haven't been sticking to the plan and shamed if you leave the group if you say oh, i'm done with dieting then people are like oh did you see oh wow they've stopped going to meetings and they're putting on weight okay next 
ritualistic and sometimes public confessions of sins. Now, in uh, Weight Watchers, I, you know, we do the weighing of everyone and then we'd, uh, you know, how, how did your week go? And then someone would be like, well, I've actually put on weight this week and um, I think it's because I ate um, one baked bean last week and, um, you know, I was really greedy and whatever, having to confess their sins of what they've done. Just to make it clear that FYI, it's not actually anyone's fault if you don't lose weight even if you do stick to the plan and many times people were and are quote unquote perfect and put on weight even if they are perfect doing the diet um, because their bodies are magical and make sure that we don't die with this forced starvation so just wanted to make that clear in case um you know me me telling you what the cult the diet cult is saying that's not the reality right is that you could eat nothing and still put on weight because our bodies are trying to keep us alive okay so phobia indoctrination including irrational fears about leaving the group or questioning the leader's authority so first part is no happiness or fulfillment possible outside the group and that is such a big one right because if you leave and you're fat your life is a non-starter. Next, it says terrible consequences if you leave. The consequences that that um, diet culture tells us, the consequences for leaving and not dieting, not trying to become thin, the consequences are death, right? They say you will die. And they use these as examples all the time. Like, oh, this one person had a heart attack one time. Someone died once and they happened to be fat. Um, and if you do leave, then you're not going to be able to play with your kids. And your kids are not going to love you as much because you're not going to be able to do handstands or whatever with them. And you can do that if you're fat. You can learn to do a handstand and still be fat, whatever. Um, and your partner thinks that you're so unattractive and your family is embarrassed by you. Like, holy shit, are they terrible consequences if you leave? They are really <laughs> awful consequences. Uh, okay, finally, shunning of those who leave, fear of being rejected by f friends and family, and never a, le a legitimate reason to leave. Those who leave are weak and undisciplined. Hmm, well... The consequences of leaving, I want to go into that a little bit more here with this article called, um, titled Why We Fell for Clean Eating by B. Wilson and it was written for The Guardian. And I want to read an excerpt here for you. Now, I want you to skip forward a couple of minutes here if you don't want to hear brief descriptions of disordered eating behaviours. So I'm just going to read this thing out. Skip forward uh, three minutes um, to avoid hearing this. So here we go. In the spring of 2014, Jordan Younger noticed that her hair was falling out in clumps. Not cool was her reaction. At the time, Younger, 23, believed herself to be eating the healthiest, healthiest of all possible diets. She was a gluten-free, sugar-free, oil-free, grain-free, legume-free, plant-based, raw vegan. As the blonde vegan, Younger was a quote-unquote wellness blogger in New York City, one of thousands of Instagram, where she had 70,000 followers, rallying under the hashtag eat clean. Although she had no qualifications as a nutritionist, Younger had sold more than 40,000 copies of her own $25 five-day cleanse program, a formula for an all-raw plant-based diet majoring on green juice. But the quote-unquote clean diet that Younger was selling as the route to health was making its creator sick. Far from being super healthy, she was suffering from serious, a serious eating disorder, orthorexia, an obsession with consuming only foods that are pure and perfect. Younger's raw vegan diet had caused her periods to stop and given her skin an orange tinge from all the sweet potato and carrots she consumed, the only carbohydrates she, put, she permitted herself. Eventually she sought psychological help and began to slowly widen the repertoire of food she would allow herself to eat, starting with fish. 
She recognised that the problem was not her veganism per se, but the particularly rigid and restrictive diet regime she had imposed on herself. As Younger slowly recovered from her eating disorder, she faced a new dilemma. What would people think? She agonised. If they knew the blonde vegan was eating fish? She levelled with her followers in a blog post entitled Why I'm Transitioning Away from Veganism. Within hours of announcing her new diet, Younger was receiving irate messages from vegans demanding money back from the cleanse programs and t-shirts they had bought from her site, featuring slogans such as, Oh Kale Yes. She lost followers by the thousands and received a daily raft of angry messages including death threats. Some responded to her confession that she was suffering from an eating disorder by accusing her of being a fat piece of lard who didn't have the discipline to be truly quote unquote clean. Now, obviously that is a more extreme version of the consequences of leaving because this person had 70,000 followers. And um, most people don't have 70,000 followers, but you will experience that potentially on a, a, a more micro scale, but it's still consequences, right? You still have, it might just be a couple of people being, you know, thinking that you're a terrible person, but it's if that is your life um, and your life is dieting, then those people are a big part in your life, then that is really painful and hard and difficult. And it is really hard to leave the cult of diet culture. I want to read you another post from uh, Dr. Jill Murphy. Um, and she writes in her piece, uh, which is titled, um, Trying to Leave the Cult of Weight Loss and Why It's So Much Harder to Leave Than an Actual Cult. And I'm going to put all of these um, links to all of these, everything that I mentioned in the show notes. So let me read you this thing um, about why it's so hard to leave um, from Dr. Jill Murphy. Here is one of the striking differences I see between leaving a cult and leaving diet culture. While the definition of cult is somewhat unclear and controversial, there is a widely accepted understanding that a cult is a social group with socially deviant or novel beliefs and practices. But diet and weight loss thoughts and ideals are not considered socially deviant by the masses, nor are they novel in our culture. They are the norm. If you were to escape a cult, you'd be free. You'd begin to heal and recover and reclaim your life and most of the people around you would be supportive. They'd be appalled by what you had uh, endured, in, um, enraged even. You'd receive confirmation that what you went through was traumatic and immoral and that by walking away out of your cult community, you were doing the right thing, the thing that is best for you. When women are finally able to see diet culture for what it is and walk out of it, they are not often met with applause or even compassionate understanding. Instead, what they find is that to their horror, the world that we live in is the cult. And while they've walked out, everyone around them is resolutely bought in. Their school system is a cult, their doctor's office is the cult, the gym is the cult, the grocery store line and the coffee shop and their favourite television shows and fiction books, they are all the cult. And instead of feeling like they're finally free, women realise that they will never truly be free. They're going to need to cultivate their own freedom daily while enduring side eye from their sister-in-law and comments from well-intentioned acquaintances and strangers that love to give free advice on all the ways that you could and should buy back in. It's worth it though because the best thing about leaving this cult is that you reclaim personal power. You make that statement that you will no longer participate in your own abuse or oppression. And that is the moment that life gets infinitely better, easier and more incredible. So it's absolutely true. It's everywhere, right? This cult, this diet culture cult is everywhere. And so it makes it very, very difficult when there's hardly any, there's hardly anyone to say, you know what, you're right. The, like, um, uh, what you experienced was bad. And luckily you have this community online and, um, people in real life as well, who, um, not, not real life, but people in day-to-day -day life and in, um, that you can see face to face that, uh, 
are able to say, yeah, no, I, uh, uh, you know, I understand. And obviously it's going to be less than those who are like, you should try a diet. Have you thought about dieting before? I also want to recognize here that leaving any type of cult is hard. And I don't necessarily believe that leaving a diet cult is harder than leaving a traditional cult. It's, it's, it's just very different, right? So if someone is in an extreme religious cult, then um, they could be shunned from their whole family and community and have to start again, perhaps with no money or limited money or no education or limited education. And um, if you grew up in, if you grew up in a cult, then, um, you're going to have to enter a world that you don't necessarily know and were told was very dangerous and you know the people in it were very evil for example and that is really 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 hard obviously and so i don't want to take away from the fact that leaving any type of cult is hard um and i think that what dr jill is saying in this piece is that um one benefit of um leaving a traditional cult is the rest of the world is like oh shit that would that that's not good like cults are bad but with, with diets the rest of the world is like oh well just diet why not it's great but still even if you're leaving a diet cult there is still a potential for, for you to be shunned from your community um, if your community happens to be if you're surrounded by dieters and fat phobes and yes lots of people have lost family members when they have left the adult, the cult of diet. Um, I know myself that I have lost um, tons of friends who were still in the diet cult and um, a family member, but the difference was it that was my choice, right? And so me leaving the diet cult, um, afterwards, after time, I made that decision to cut those people out of my life. Whereas if you're living in a traditional extreme cult, religious cult, then you don't necessarily have that decision. And a lot of times people want to connect with the people who are still in the cult. So just some differences there. Also, you're not likely to be going into a slimming world weekly meeting and ex experience all of the um, extreme things we think about in a religious cult. You're not going to be told to go out and kill fat people who refuse to believe in the ways of dieting, right? Um, but it doesn't mean that the impact of a diet cult isn't incredibly harmful. And fat people do die at the hands of diet culture and straight sized people. Think about the subpar medical treatment that fat people get or, um, if a straight sized person, a straight sized person goes in to get, um, they have an issue and it's seen as a quote unquote fat person's issue and they just don't get treated or diagnosed because they have a smaller body and so they're presumed to be healthy. So that, you know, it harms fat people and straight sized people. And what about the effect that diet culture has on people's mental health? And how many people die due to unmanageable mental health, in part because of the messages of diet culture. Uh, those messages being that they're lazy, they're greedy, their body is wrong, they're unlovable, they're never gonna get a boyfriend because they're fat, la 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 la. Um, how much is that, you know, I say a part, but that could be a giant reason that people no longer want to live. And I'm willing to bet more people die every year at the hands of diet cults than more traditional extreme religious cults. I'm willing to bet because think of all of the millions and billions, billions of fat people in the world and how they are not getting the care that they deserve and the consequences of that, the consequences for their physical and their mental health. So, you know, difference is there, but you know, I want to, I want to say that cults are fucked up, you know. Uh, uh, what we would think of as a traditional cult is awful. It's terrible. It's it's very difficult and it's very um extremely difficult for people to leave and to um re-enter the world and do all of that stuff. And also 
diet cults are awful and terrible and um, it's difficult to recover and we should you know educate people on what it's like to be uh, have your mind controlled and have your life controlled in a way that is not beneficial for you and doesn't make you happy um, so it's your decision if you want to engage in diet cults or not it's your decision right you can do what you want but I encourage you to use your critical thinking skills and ask if what you are doing is making you feel good making you feel empowered or it's making you feel guilty and ashamed and if it's making you feel guilty and ashamed maybe there's another way leaving diet culture cult and we can't completely leave it because we live in diet culture but we can try and protect ourselves and protect our mental health as as much as possible so to answer is diet culture our diets uh cults well yeah <laughs> yeah and that's not taking it you know i'm not be it's not hyperbole it is like yeah yeah and they're dangerous and just because um they're not the way that we view cults in um a traditional type stereotypical way of what we view cults there's still so many behaviors and um ways that you are controlled with diets that very very closely resemble what it is to be a cult so if you want to get all the links for everything that I've shared, go to the show notes, which is fiercefatty.com forward slash zero four one. Or you can probably just scroll down on whatever device you're listening to and see the show notes there. And make sure that if you are requesting to join Fierce Fatty Friends, my Facebook Facebook group, that you answer those questions so that you're not going to be uh, deleted at the door. And if you're if you've previously tried to get in and you've not got in, then um, request again and answer the questions so that you can, we can make sure that you're a real human being and not a diet culture robot. <laughs> we don't want that. We don't want that. So, OK, um, so thanks for hanging out with me today. I appreciate it. If you enjoyed this episode, why not leave me a review? And if you leave me a nice juicy five-star review, then uh, you can get a free copy of my book, Fierce Fatty, uh, a digital and audio uh, copy if you take a screenshot before you submit your review. And then email me, victoria at fiercefatty.com, and I'll send you free, free digital and audio version of my book. Okay, so thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you next time. See you in a while. Alligator. See you later. Crocodile. Okay, bye.